It's that time of the year yet again. And now that we have finally transitioned into the next generation of gaming, with that now comes with new controllers, most notably the Xbox Series X controller and the DualSense controller. So with these new additions, which of these is going to be the best controller for PC gaming? And that includes a bunch of other older ones that we have covered in the past. So we're going to be comparing six different controllers in this video. So which one is the best one for PC gaming? Let's go ahead and dive right in. before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that we have a Twitch channel where we stream every Friday and Saturday from 8pm and to 10pm Eastern Time, so why not go ahead and drop a follow? And also don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and also make sure to check out the merch store. There's plenty of black and white sweetness to choose from up there, so go ahead and check that out. And then make sure to take a look at the podcast as well, as the podcast always goes live every Wednesday and Sunday. And with that said, enough rambling, let us get straight into the video. And I'm going to very quickly introduce every controller that I'm going to be testing out in this video. A DualSense controller is Sony's latest offering, replacing the DualShock 4 controller that we used to test out on this channel. This controller has easily the best color scheme of this entire lineup, great comfort, and a very fresh design featuring a USB-C port, which is something that is highly underrated. Next is the Xbox Series X controller. This one also features a fresh USB-C port, some great heft, and a new D-pad style that resembles that of the Elite controllers. And this is a very good one that never disappoints. Next, we will be going back to some of the older ones too, specifically the Google Stadia controller. In the past, I've already talked about how much I love this controller already, and I think that it is very nicely weighed, and that the button's placement is honestly, quite frankly, on point. And it's one of the best feeling controllers of all time, and it's definitely going to be pretty top notch for the price, I would say. Next up is going to be the Steam controller. This one is known for being one of the best options for PC gaming, even if I may not necessarily agree with everybody here. I think that it is worth bringing up since it is a great controller nonetheless, and especially once you get the hang of it. And it should yield some very interesting results just as before. And this one has been discontinued unfortunately, so you may not find new ones so easily, but the used market should still yield a lot of these, so I would recommend that you look around there. And now, the Nvidia Shield controller is a very interesting one for sure, and one that I featured in the previous video as well. It's got the most interesting shape of them all and is surprisingly comfortable. However, it's got a, a ton of competition ahead. Lastly, the Nintendo Switch Pro controller is Nintendo's best controller right now. It has a USB-C port, of course, and a design that resembles an Xbox controller, but different in its own way too. There's a lot to look at here for sure, so I think we're ready to start jumping in onto what games we're going to be testing out. I'm going to be testing out four different genres of games in order to determine which controller is best for which genre in kind of like a tier list. For an action RPG, I chose Dark Souls 3. For a turn-based game, I chose Final Fantasy X. For a fighting game, I chose Dragon Ball Fighters, And for a first-person shooter, I picked Doom. Now, let's dive in. So let's begin with Dark Souls 3. I've really been itching to try out the newer controller since I tried out the DualSense controller first. It's worth noting that it wasn't recognized properly on Steam and that I had to remap every single button on it in order to get it to work at first. However, I had a pretty good time after that. I didn't get the haptic triggers feature since that only works on PS5 right now, so I can't really comment on that at all. But I had a pretty great time playing Dark Souls with this controller as the handles feel very sturdy and I really love the shape of this controller. It's just very comfortable for sure, and especially when it comes to just, I mean, gaming in general. It is one that you can totally play this game with for a pretty long while. Uh, but it won't be the best option for every game. I actually had a good time playing here, but obviously not perfect since some of the buttons did feel still a little bit mushy at times, and the pause and share buttons are pretty tough to press. I'm not sure why they are as stiff, as oddly shaped as they are, but yeah, there's that. The Xbox Series X controller was a slightly better performer here, since I actually preferred the feeling of the triggers for this controller versus the DualSense controller. This controller was very comfortable to use and the buttons felt nicer to press in general, though it actually felt a little bit more cramped on the Xbox side here. However, I would still consider my experience to be a little bit better than the one that I got with the DualSense controller on the other hand. The Nintendo Switch Pro controller actually gave me some issues here and I didn't really love playing Dark Souls with this controller. While the buttons are larger and easier to 
press than on the Xbox side. The grip didn't feel quite right and I found the thumbsticks to be way too slippery for my liking in this case which I mean it definitely affected my performance at times so this was not my favorite but it is doable if anything. And the Google Stadia controller actually gave me a pretty good experience. I wouldn't consider it to be the best of the bunch but it was one of my favorites. I had a surprisingly good time playing with this controller since everything felt like it was in the right place and it was pretty easy to press in general. Now the triggers were maybe a little bit too soft for me but I'm pretty satisfied with my experience overall. The Steam controller surprised me here even more though and it might be weird to say but I actually found this controller to be far too effective in Dark Souls. Now the last game that I expected this controller to be any good with if I'm honest. The trackpad was incredibly responsive here and moved much faster than I was used to while being so easy to use. I just felt very effective using this controller as my hands just automatically adjusted to this controller during battle. This was probably my favorite experience of the entire bunch and it, it's not easy to say that because I was not expecting that at all but hey. And lastly the Nvidia Shield controller was another great performer mostly in terms of the great triggers and the comfort that you get from this controller. It was pretty good and it made me want to play more games like it using GeForce Now for sure. It is going to be a pretty good experience overall but not quite the same as the Steam controller. And so the Steam controller does get the number one spot here as it honestly deserves it and I can't see any other controller on this list eating it out here. It took me trying it to believe it. Then there's a Stadia controller in second place, the Nvidia Shield controller in third place, the Xbox Series X controller in fourth place, the DualSense controller in fifth, and the Switch Pro controller in last place. And now turn-based gaming with Final Fantasy X is a completely different story and things like the d-pad and comfort of the controller are going to be the most important things to consider and this might actually end up flipping the, the table on a lot of the things that I just mentioned. The DualSense controller performed quite well here. This controller is very comfortable to use for long periods of time and the texture around the back makes it easier to hold and harder to sweat on, at least for now, of course. Now, the D-pad is a little mushy for my liking here though and I didn't love that part so much but it wasn't a bad performer here at all. It is a great controller and thanks to how comfortable it is, it is a great option if you do want to play for long periods of time. However, I have to say that I somewhat preferred the clickier d-pad on the Xbox Series X controller but I didn't find the controller to be quite as comfortable to use. I'd say that it felt a little much for a relaxed genre like this one like a turn-based game where you just want to take things a little bit easy. The controller just felt a little bit too big in a sense for that so I didn't love it too much. And the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller was the biggest offender here. Sadly this is because it's got the stiffest d-pad of the bunch and one of the lighter analog sticks to play with so it's not so comfortable to play turn-based games with this controller at all. It's only second to worst on this list though and you'll see why. And the SATA controller was one of my favorites here because it's got a very nice clicky d-pad in my opinion. I really liked it and this controller is easily one of the more comfortable ones in my opinion. I love using this controller for turn-based games in particular but it shines even better on a different genre that is coming up soon. And the Video Shield controller was a great performer here too because of its very clicky d pad that does allow for a lot of precision when picking options within menus without a hassle. It is a comfortable controller but the sharper corners may start to dig in with longer play sessions and that is something to keep into consideration that while, while the boxiness of it might actually feel oddly comfortable at first, it might get a little bit uncomfortable over time. And the Steam controller was my least favorite controller here, even compared to the Switch controller. It just feels like too much for a relaxed genre like this one. Sure, you can tap to move the D-pad and forward instead of actually having to press it, but this controller is just too big for my liking and is easily the last option on my list here when it comes to turn-based games. So I would put the Google Stadia controller at the top here since it really does fulfill my needs the best. Then I would put the DualSense controller in second place with the Nvidia Shield controller coming in in third place, the Xbox Series X going in at fourth place, the Switch Pro controller going in at fifth place, and lastly the Sync controller in last place 
for this segment. And let's get into 2.5D fighting games, with Dragon Ball Fighters being the best example, or at least one that I really wanted to test out here. Now, the DualSense controller performed well here, but I didn't love it for fighting games. It was fine, and I would say that it felt more average than anything when it comes to performance. Not much better than the DualShock 4 controller, in my opinion, even though it is a little bit bigger, the shape is a little bit different. So this controller is certainly more, more comfortable for sure. And it is going to be a step up in the form of comfort without a doubt. Now using the triggers was also a, gr a great point since the triggers felt pretty responsive here and it felt fine playing with this controller. I didn't really have many issues or many things to complain about here. And now the Xbox Series X controller is probably the winner here since the eight way D-pad works wonders here and the triggers felt very responsive. It just feels tailor made for this kind of genre. I felt like I was the most effective when playing with the Xbox Series X controller and it certainly made making combos much easier than it is on every other controller on this list. And now the Nintendo Switch Pro controller doesn't have a good D-pad at all and that is kind of what messes with the experience here the most. Now I do love the triggers on this controller which did redeem it to an extent but I did find myself going back to the thumbsticks which isn't so great for the Pro controller's overall performance rating if I'm honest because I much prefer to play with a D-pad since it's just much more precise than using a thumbstick. And the Stadia controller once again performed very well here and I thought that it was very good for fighting games. Not my top choice but pretty close since the D-pad is so good and the triggers are very responsive. And seriously, I do tend to claim that the Stadia controller is one of the best design controllers and I still feel that way going through so many genres. And it's just been consistently good in all places if I'm frank. Now, the Nvidia Shield controller was a little weird here. I didn't like the shape of this controller when it came to fighters at least. It just kind of fell off and the d-pad is usually pretty great in most games but i didn't love it too much in this genre because it felt a little bit too stiff actually for my liking here and the shape of this controller kind of messes with my perception here too and finally the steam controller was more so of an in-between here it wasn't good but it wasn't bad either the shape was a little off for me here too and i couldn't use the d-pad function to play so well and immediately switched over to using the joystick instead which isn't a preference of mine at all. However, I ended up performing decently nonetheless, so I think that it just takes more practice to get a better handle of this controller when it comes to fighting games. In first place, I have to put the Xbox Series X controller there because it was a great experience playing with it and the most comfortable, almost like using an Elite controller which is honestly really awesome. Then there's the Stadia controller in second place, with the DualSense controller coming in third place, then the Steam controller coming up in fourth place, and then we've got the Nintendo Switch Pro controller coming in at fifth place, and lastly the Nvidia Shield controller coming in in last place. And now for the last genre, we've got an FPS here, and this is going to be Doom. The DualSense controller felt pretty great here, and the triggers felt pretty nice here as well. I didn't feel held back at all with this controller, but nothing really stands out that much for it either, which made the experience maybe just a little bit above average. For me, it is a lovely controller, but it didn't feel that special for shooters or like it gave me any kind of inherent advantage really. And the Xbox Series X controller was a very good one here. The triggers felt better for sure, and the button's placement was pretty great too, to be frank. Though the concave nature of the thumbsticks does help quite a lot actually when it comes to keeping your fingers from sliding off. If you're pressing down on these, it does feel a little bit stiff for my liking, especially if I'm trying to do a melee finisher. So it was a great experience, but not the best of the bunch. And the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller actually performed very, very well here. And I can give it a lot of credit here. You can forget the D-pad entirely, which means that you get to use the immediately activated gyroscope on the Pro Controller and Jesus does it make a difference. Moving your camera around just gets so much easier with gyro and it made aiming and looking around a lot more comfortable with it. This is a very close second really when it comes to the best controller for shooters here and it only falls behind due to the number one spot just being even smoother to use here than the Switch Pro controller but I really don't have any complaints for the Switch controller when it comes to shooters here. And now the Sega controller was pretty good but I wouldn't pick it as my main choice for shooters. There's something about the shape ironically that after playing for some time it's just not quite as comfortable having to alternate so much between the triggers and other buttons. I liked it, don't get me wrong, but 
I didn't love it for shooters. The Nvidia Shield controller was very much the same for me for the most part and wasn't much better or much worse and then the SATA controller, the shape just kind of threw me off and the joysticks are more plasticky which makes getting precise more difficult. And now here's the kicker, the same controller wins this competition easily here. After a long time of you all recommending gyro to me for shooters, I finally tried it and I absolutely loved it. It immediately changed my perception of this controller to making it the best controller for this genre. Just how the pro controller handles gyro, the Steam controller handles it even better with greater fine tuning and it really made the experience of aiming much easier, immediately turning around to respond to enemies much easier and just changed the whole experience for me here. Like, this is what I want for first person shooters if I'm using a controller at all. This is really good. And the Steam controller has to win in first place without a doubt for first person shooters. And then the Nintendo Switch comes in and as a close second with the Xbox Series X controller coming in at third place. Then following up is the DualSense controller in fourth place, the Stadia controller in fifth place, and finally the Nvidia Shield controller in last place. So in conclusion, I think I'm going to tell you right away what my preference was between all of these and if I could only choose one of these controllers for myself and that would be the Google Stadia controller because I think it's the most comfortable of the bunch and the one with the best design overall. However, that's just my preference. The Sync controller can offer you a lot of customization but it might be overwhelming for a lot of people as it still is to me to this day so I can't really recommend it to absolutely everybody but if you are an enthusiast and really want to dig into your settings and then customize your controller to really be your own then the sim controller could very well be the controller for you the nvidia shield controller and the nintendo switch pro controllers are the least likely ones that i would buy independently i would say like if i were to buy them just for pc gaming i i don't think i would do that but since i own both a switch and the shield tv i ended up having to own both controllers and if i only had either one i think i'd still be fine with either one. However, the new controllers like the Xbox Series X controller and the DualSense controllers are great offerings, but I wouldn't buy them exclusively for PC gaming just yet either. They are great controllers, but they should be used with their respective consoles, to be honest, if you want the most out of them. So my favorite was the Stadia controller, but the one with the most potential was the Steam controller, and the one that you're probably the most likely to fall in love with is going to be the Xbox Series X controller. So I would consider that one to be the best option for PC gaming. And if you're interested in purchasing any of these controllers, then I'll be making sure to leave affiliate links down to Amazon in the description so that you can make sure to get your hands on those. And if you end up using any of my links, I do get a small commission that does help out the channel quite a bit. There's also the option for Luster in case you're trying to find sales on any of these controllers. I actually took advantage of a sale that I was able to find through Luster on the Microsoft store where I got the Xbox Series X controller for only 40 bucks. So I strongly re recommend that you install Luster because Luster is going to help you out in finding sales online. The links to that down below, and you're also going to get a bunda. If you do want the option of being able to finance your controller or just like pay for it a little by little, then because I know that if you just got your console recently, for instance, like like a Series X or like a PlayStation 5, then you probably don't have that much money to just toss around. So I understand if you would rather kind of just finance a couple things. So I'm going to be leaving links to all of these controllers for a bunda down in the description. If you use any of these, you'd be helping out the channel quite a bit. So I'd appreciate appreciate that quite a bit. Also, do make sure to stop by the Tech Summit podcast. It does go live every week and just make sure to subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any episodes. I also stream on Twitch every Friday and Saturday if you would like to catch me there. Links to that below as well as other links to my social media stuff like my Twitter, my Instagram. But with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy. <laughs>